Hi, I'm Matthew Buzzy from PC Mag, and this is the HP Z2 Mini G5 workstation. We reviewed the G4 previously, uh, it's mostly the same, from the outside you wouldn't notice any differences, but uh, the updates have mostly to do with the components, uh, we have new processor options, and that sort of elevates it even further. Uh, we liked this before when we previously reviewed it, but now it's even faster. The starting price for this is $1,400. To get up to the very high spec configuration that we reviewed, which I'll get to in a moment, you have to spend a couple thousand more dollars than that. Uh, this is an expensive configuration we have, and for that you get a Core i7 uh, processor, 32 gigs of RAM, an NVIDIA Quadro GPU, and over a terabyte of SSD storage. So definitely no slouch. You might be thinking the Core i7 is not what you want out of a workstation, because this is really for high-end professional use, um, big heavy workloads, architects, engineers, uh, animators, media editors and creators, so people who really need a lot out of their computer, that's what the workstation category is for. So Core i7, you might think that that's not quite enough, maybe I want a Core i9 or an Intel Xeon processor, and those are options offered with this. Um, you can upgrade to those chips instead, it does get even more expensive, but they are options. That said, the Core i7, uh, in, this, in particular the 10700K, uh, was really impressive in this unit. It hung up there with Core i9s, some Core i9s from the previous gen, but Core i9s nonetheless, as well as an Intel Xeon option. Um, it was kind of smoked by AMZ's Ryzen 9 uh, 5090X uh, as the competitor, but uh, as far as the Intel chips are concerned, um, you can upgrade, and the 10700K was also uh, plenty capable and really in the same power tier as those other chips anyway. So not a lot to worry about as far as the processor. Um, it's, still, it's still great and it's even more impressive because it's in such a small chassis. Now the GPU, obviously you can't fit a full-size graphics card in here. It's gonna be the mobile version of the uh, Quadro T2000, but still, again, we saw pretty good GPU performance, 32 gigs of RAM helping it out across the board, and you have a 512 gigabyte boot drive and a one terabyte uh, SSD for the rest of your applications and data. Almost as important as the components for professionals are the port options, and this does have plenty, again, despite its small size. Um, we'll start here on the left flank. There's nothing on the front except the power button and nothing on the right. All the ports are located around here on the left and on the rear. Uh, on the left side here, we have USB-C with Thunderbolt 3 support, two USB-A ports, and just the headphone jack. So not a ton over there, but most of them are located around back. There's three display ports. Uh, we have a VGA connection, which not everybody might need. Um, that actually occupies the flex port option, which you can choose between any of these other options or an HDMI port, which I probably would have picked, but the review unit we were sent has the VGA connection. Uh, there's also, as you can see, an Ethernet jack and two additional USB-A ports and another USB-C port with Thunderbolt 3. Um, so really, multiple display support, uh, plenty of ports for your peripherals. Maybe you want to see a couple more USB-A supports if you're really peripheral happy, but generally speaking, um, this has everything you're going to need. You can plug in multiple peripherals, peripherals drives, mice, keyboards. Um, it also supports Bluetooth and Wi-Fi 6. So options are available to you. Three display ports, no HDMI on this, but the creator types who are using uh, who are using these this type of system probably have big high-res multiple monitor setup that all support DisplayPort. So if you do need HDMI, you can always switch it out and order the HDMI uh, in the Flex option. Another great thing about this system is that the access to the interior is toolless. It really could not be easier. Um, there's a switcher on back that you just flip, and then from there you can pop the top off the system. It does require two hands, just like that. Very easy to do, the lid comes off. Um, you can see the fans, the CPU, the GPU, and uh, these do lift up, which is pretty neat, which gives you a sneak peek to the SSDs below, um, and that's really the most accessible thing. Anything else is screwed down, so get your IT manager to do it, to do any of this really. Um, but it is accessible, no tools needed, so despite the fact that it's a small form factor and can't take all of the things and parts that you might want to install in a full-size tower, uh, you can still access it and maintenance it or upgrade some of it pretty easily. Now one of the main cons that I do have to cover is the fact that it needs this external power brick. Obviously most desktops don't need this. There's not much room in here though for an uh, internal power supply, so that has been relegated to the outside. This plugs in just like a laptop charger. This is an even bigger brick than uh, the average laptop charger, but it is what it is. It saves you space on your desk still at least, and you can drape this behind, put it on the floor, so it's better than that all taking up uh, footprint size on your desk. So a bit of a compromise and it's not like you're taking this with you anywhere. So once it's plugged in, it's probably where it's gonna stay. Um, so a power brick is a lot less annoying than it would be to travel with. So aside from that relatively minor complaint with the power brick, there's not that much to complain about. Uh, 
Our configuration is pretty expensive, granted. Uh, most configurations that are going to compete on the high end are, but the competitors are expensive too, and they don't offer the small form factor advantage. So you are getting something for it. Uh, you're definitely paying a bit of a premium to get it in this small of a chassis, but not a huge premium. I mean, these parts are these parts are good and they're expensive. Um, so there's a little bit of pros and cons. You should really only be looking at this if you have much interest in the fact that it's small. Otherwise, a different tower, if you have essentially unlimited or a very large amount of desk space or office space to store a bunch of computer towers um, that are much larger than this, then go for it, go for those. They might save you a bit of money. If you're interested in the compact design, like what it has to offer and think you can find the configuration that's right for your power needs and budget, this definitely could be the system for you. Uh, you can read my full review on PCMag.com for more on the details of the performance and uh, benchmark tests, as well as a little bit more of a breakdown of the components. So go ahead and check that out. Um, four stars out of five. We think this is a really solid product, even if it's not that different from last year's. Uh, but please go read the full review for more details. And thanks for watching.